Awak So the presence of God I welcome you all this morning to this uh, cooking class. And I pray and uh, believe that you go home this morning satisfied nourished, strong, and well blessed in Jesus' mighty name. So it's a divine cooking class which I've entitled Follow the Recipe. Follow the Recipe. The Word of God is God's recipe for obtaining everything that you will ever ask or want from Him. Everything that you will ever need, ask, desire, want, pray for is found in that Word. You want to experience breakthrough, miracles, signs, and wonders. You want to experience abundance, fruitfulness, promotion, victory, health, and healing. All of it, the recipe for it, is found in that book. The Word of God, the Bible, is God's recipe for every promise that he has made. Jesus said in Matthew 6, he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. One of the more modern translations says, Righteousness is knowing what God wants you to do. Righteousness. It says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So it says righteousness is knowing the way the kingdom of God operates. Righteousness, which is right standing with God, is knowing what God demands of you and I to obtain the fullness of the promise. Matthew 4, 4 says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The word of God itself, Jesus called himself the bread from heaven, the living bread. In John 6, it says, your fathers ate manna and quails in the wilderness, yet they still die. I am the bread from the Father, I am the bread from heaven. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life in him or herself. So, you want to have life, strength, well-being. You're always feeling tired. The recipe for that is to eat his flesh and drink his blood, which is communion. Except a man eats my flesh and drink my blood, he hath no life in himself. The words, the very words which I speak, they are life and spirit, or spirit and life. If you do not know what he has said, then you cannot obtain or get the required results. A person that wants to cook, 
or is learning to cook must follow the laid down recipe of his or her teacher. To get uh, the desired uh, result. So, for example, you can put different foodstuffs or materials together. And by cooking them uh, different ways, uh, you get different results. They take flour, they mix it with sugar, milk, butter, whatever it is. But what they do with that mixture and how they go about it thereafter determines what they get. The same mixture will deliver bread. It will not just deliver bread, but when you prepare it in different manners and ways, you get different types of bread. The same mixture is what will give you biscuit. Now, when you follow a particular pattern, it delivers bread. When you follow a different pattern, it delivers biscuit. When you follow a different pattern, it delivers chinchi. When you follow a different pattern, it delivers for forth from the same type of material, but because now the manner of preparation has differed, it gives you different results. If your lesson teacher says this is the way to make puff puff, and you go about it another way, you will not get puff puff, but you get something else. And that something else might not be edible. You might not be able to eat it. And it's the same thing with the word of God. In the book of John 2, at the marriage in Canaan of Galilee, let me use that here. When they came to meet his mother, and the woman said, well, whatsoever he tells you to do, do. John 2, I read from verse 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine eye is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever is said unto you, it might not make sense to you. Because most of the time, when God tells a person to do something, it's beyond human comprehension. And there were said three, six what apostles told after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three kings apiece. Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw up now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not hence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men are well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Take water. Put it in the water pots and just draw it out. If they did not follow the divine instruction, they wouldn't have got a miracle. And there are many people, or most people, do not follow the divine instruction, the divine recipe for obtaining miracles or for obtaining a divine intervention in their situation or circumstance. Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28. Nine to thirteen. Isaiah 28. Nine to thirteen. I'm going to read from the amplified version. 
Isaiah 28, 9 to 13. To whom will he teach knowledge? In brackets, ask the drunkards. And who will he make to understand the message? Those who are babies, just weaned from the milk and taken from the breast. Is that what he thinks we are? For it is his prophets repeating over and over, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, rule upon rule, rule upon rule, here a little, there a little. No, but the Lord will teach the rebels in a more humiliating way by men with stammering lips and another tongue. Will he speak to his people, says Isaiah, and teach them his lessons. Those complaining Jews, the Lord has said, this is the true rest, the way to true comfort and happiness that he shall give to the weary, and this is the true refreshing, yet they will not listen to his teaching. Therefore, the word of the Lord will be to them merely monotonous repeatings of precept upon precepts, Precepts upon precepts, rule upon rule, rule upon rule, here a little, there a little, that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Precept upon precept, a little here and a little there, and then you get the desired result. If you do not follow divine instruction, you can end up in trouble. If you do not follow divine instruction, then you cannot get uh, the desired result. It says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 17, 17, sanctify them by thy word, for thy word is truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Everything that you need or you require, find out biblical principles eh, for obtaining that thing. Find out the biblical principles for getting that thing. Exodus 20:12. Exodus 20:12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land with the Lord thy God giveth thee. Deuteronomy 5.16. Deuteronomy 5.16. Honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, one of the conditions uh, for living long is to honor father or mother. One of the conditions uh, for it to be well with you is to honor your father and your mother. You cannot be at loggerheads with your father or your mother and expect you to be, ah, ah, come now, sir, you'll sit here, sir. Ah, who put him there? You put my guy at the back. Oh, yeah, come and sit here, sir. This pastor, Kaya de Olua Shegmojo, is a big pastor. <laughs> Honor thy father and thy mother, the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy day might be prolonged and that he might go well within the language the Lord thy God giveth thee. In the book of Ephesians, he says, This is the first commandment uh, with an express blessing. You want it to be well with you. See where to start. It's not by going from church to church. It's not by going from prayer ground to prayer ground. It's not by going from prayer mountain to prayer mountain. It's not by going from pastor to pastor. If you have not got heads with your parents, if you have dishonored them, you are in trouble. The best that can ever happen no matter how anointed that man or woman is, 
is that when they pray for you, have you seen where they tie a cow before? At the slaughterhouse, they put a rope on the leg of the cow. Now, the length of that rope determines how far, far that cow can go. So the cow will move forward. When it gets to the limit of the rope, it stops. When you are not that heads with your parents, when an anointed man or woman of God prays for you, you are like that cow with a rope at your leg. You move forward a little bit, then you get stuck. And there are many people, I'm going to do a teaching on that, God has been telling you for about two or three years. I did it once in, uh, years ago. I know thy father and thy mother. And uh, there's a man, he's a, he's a pastor now. He said to me some years back, he said, sir, he said, do you remember that message? I did it for about maybe about six or nine services. He said, that message changed my life. That message changed my life. So, he says, I'm his father. I don't want to go into that. There are three sets of parents. Your biological parents, your spiritual parents, and most of all, the father in heaven. And all of them must be honored if you want it to be well with you. So every Christmas, he comes to my house, he brings hamper, and then beginning of January, he will bring money. He said, pray for me. When I was doing that teaching, he had nothing. Some people here know him. That time, we used to carry equipment. They used to carry it at the back of one open back pickup. So he used to it was whether he was beating the drum or conga or something. Uh-huh. He was even learning, just doing jaga jaga. Uh-huh. So when they load the back of the pickup with those instruments, he would sit like this, in the back of the pickup like this. Uh-huh. You know, a lot of people are very full of themselves. Uh-huh. He would sit there like this at the back of that pickup. They would drive the pickup from that uh, Giwa barracks to Awolowo Road. Everybody will see him. He was serving God. Uh, he was not ashamed. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my father and the holy angels. He did not bother himself about uh, all the people in our Lord. We, we just sit at the back of that pickup like this. And God was seeing him. Uh, and God was going to promote him. The Bible says what? He said, God is not unmindful of your labor of love. He said, do not be weary of doing good for in due cause. He said, God will promote you. Uh, God saw him that time. So he had nothing. Completely nothing. Uh. And then he kept on telling me, he said, he wants to work in the oil industry. I said, well, I don't know anybody. The only thing I know how to do is to pray. So I was praying with him for years. He finished OND, finished HND. He didn't get a job. Then he got a job counting money in a bank. Much, much lower than his certificate. I said, go and take it. Start from somewhere. He hacked to the voice of his pastor. Uh-huh. So he was there, he was counting the money, which is HND. In that place, then one day Chevron came to look for him and employed him. He said, Sir, I want to work in the oil industry. I said, I don't know anybody there, but I know God and I can pray. And I prayed for about two or three years. Then one day they employed him in Chevron. He comes from nowhere, his background is zero. Today he's flying all over the world. The company takes him, his wife, his children. He has three daughters. All of them were born in America. Yeah. <laughs> From nothing. He said when they were growing up, I think there were about maybe about 15 or so of them in one room. His father, his mother, all of them in one room, about 15. When he bought his first house in satellite, he told me a flat. <laughs> I said to myself, ah, ah. And we got him on God, I'm not going to be a tear, and he meant. Then a few years ago, he called me one day, he came to my house on a Sunday. He says, I said, I want to go and show you my house. I said, which one? I said, ah, that satellite is too far. He said, no satellite, oh. He said, Naja here. Ah, I said, Naja. So I entered inside the car. Ah, I got there, I saw this big house, four flats. This man went with me. Four flats, big. So I prayed. Then he came to me about two years ago again. Ah. He, says, uh, he said, when he was telling me, he said, this message changed my life. I said, eh, eh. He said, now, so I said, I have six houses in Lagos. 
Mm. You know, people just talk anyhow. A lot of people are running into problems because of their mouth. They talk about their parents, they talk about the pastor, they talk about God. They have sentenced their son to a curse. Jesus said, Whosoever curses father or mother, let him die. I asked myself a question. I said, ah, You open the newspapers. I'm not saying that that is the reason, you know. You open the newspaper, you see obituary, 30 something year old, 40 something year old, uh, 30 something. Uh, at times I ask myself, I said, Paradventure, maybe some of these people have dishonored their father. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew 15, 4. Matthew 15, 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother. This is Jesus speaking here. And he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. You don't need to commit suicide, though, if you want to die. You heard what I said? Just dishonor your father and your mother, and then you die quickly. Hmm. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother. He that cursed father or mother, let him do what? Uh -huh. You want to die? Just begin to dishonor your father and your mother, and you see what will happen. You might not die physically, but I'm telling you that there are so many areas of your life that will ground to a halt. You know, they say, hey, my father is a wizard, my mother is the chairman of witches in the whole world. I say, ah. I say, what my father told me is, honor thy father, uh -huh. whether they are witches, whether they are wizards, whether they are babalawos. What did he say? Uh -huh. There is a way to deal with witches or wizards when they are your parents without dishonoring them. You know what he said in the Old Testament? He said, so far not a witch to do what? Uh -huh. So that witch can be your father or your mother. He did not say dishonor them. He said, don't allow them to do what? Uh -huh. So you can stand in the place of prayer to take the life of a witch or a wizard without dishonoring that witch or wizard because it's your father or your mother. You dishonor them. It can be the wizardess of the most wizards in the whole world. You are in trouble. You see, a lot of people are just running all over the place, helter skelter. The, Jesus called it the weightier issues of the law. The things that they ought to do, they are not doing. They are running from one pastor to one pastor, one prayer ground to one prayer ground. And their father and their mother in the village is causing them. You have been in this, I don't want to divert from my message. You have been uh, in this Lagos for 15 years. You have never sent money to your father or your mother. You are in trouble. You heard what I said? Uh, you are in trouble. You don't even know what you are doing. Just pack your load and go to the village and go and look for them. Say, Mama, I've come to come and beg you. Uh, I've come to reconcile. Every prayer will be near until you reconcile. And if they are dead, you are in more trouble. If they curse you before they de die, you are in very serious trouble. And just be rolling on the front. Oluwa moti down on say. Oluwa moti down on say. Oluwa moti down on say. Eh? They say the person that cursed the person is dead. Who are you going to go and beg? When you live here, be telling the whole of Lagos that your father or your mother is a wizard. Uh, the person that you are talking to, do you know whether his own father or mother is a wizard? Did they tell you, uh, run down your own father or your mother? When Noah, the Bible says Noah became a husband man and he planted a vine and he brought wine out of it. He was a drunkard. Ah, you see that, my father? He can drink a gogoro like this. Carry on. Hmm. That my useless father. Ah, if he just say anything inside his cat, I know the carry on. He drank wine, he got drunk, and he was naked. Then his son came. He saw the nakedness. Instead of covering the man, he went to go and call the other two. He said, Come and see the useless man. He don't drink kind kind again. No. Then the other two, when they were coming, they took a cloth like this. Instead of facing the man like this, they said, I can't see my father's nakedness. They took the cloth and walked backwards and covered his nakedness. The Bible says, no woke up. He knew what he had done. He placed a curse not on him. He placed it on his children. Uh. He said, Canaan, 
shall be like this. Canaan was the son of the one that saw his nakedness. The Bible says Ham, Japheth, and Shem. Uh, he did not curse his own child, though. He placed the curse on the... Uh, do you know the meaning of that one? That's his generations forever and ever and ever and ever. Uh, he placed the curse on them. Yeah, when, when, when you are doing rascality. You know, there's so much rascality in Pentecostalism. The place is full of rascals. No respect, no nothing. They just talk to people and you know, I just be looking at them. They say, ah, okay. The recipe for what God has said eh, is in this world. There is no other place eh, to go. Luke 6, 38. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. <laughs> when you give, what did he say will happen? Uh -huh. Then he says, look at the measure, look at what will be given to you. One, good measure. Two, press down. Three, shaking together and running. A four characteristics of what will be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. You've gone to the market before. We are there selling food stuff, whether gari or rice, whatever it is. So they have those basins. Maybe they put gari in the basin. Let's assume that this is the height of the basin. You know the gari will be like this. They will pour that gari. When the basin is full, they will keep on pouring it. They'll be using hand to do it like this. The thing will be going up. Uh -huh. They will do the basin like this. When, it's first, when they are first poured it, they will do it like this. One key, they do, uh, they, uh, that's pressed down. Uh -huh. When it is pressed down, the basin, uh, the measure of the blessing uh, is more than the container. Mm. And then they keep on pouring, uh, and then they are taking the tin up like this. Uh, you think that that is easy to do? And uh, when you buy your own gari, put it inside basin and be pouring, you say, I will do it like this. Half of the gari will be on the floor. Then he said, who shall give to you? Shall men give unto you? With the same measure that you meet out shall be measured to you again. Give and it shall be given. There is nobody that is too poor to give. In fact, the way out of poverty is given. You cannot give it, you are in trouble. That one in your hand is not enough to keep you from dying. Except a corn of wheat falls into the ground, it abides alone. Uh -huh. The Bible says in 2 Kings 4, a righteous man had died, a prophet. And he died, how? Penniless. Not just that he died penniless, he died in debt. So a man can be righteous and still die in debt. It's the truth that you know that will set you free. So he had an understanding of the truth of righteousness and he went to heaven. Did you see the story of the rich man and Lazarus? The rich man had an understanding of financial prosperity, but had no understanding of righteousness. In this world, he had plenty, and then he went to hell. Righteous, um, Lazarus had an understanding of righteousness, but he did not have an understanding of prosperity. He lived poor, but went to heaven. The prophet, uh, the widow said, you know, my man, you know my husband, a man who is righteous and fear God, he died in this then after dying in Bessie, the people that was owing money said, well, we know that he has two sons. Let us go and fetch them. For, to be working for us until they can... Ah, the boys will be working for the man who is owing money. He will not pay them. It's not as if he's going to say the salary that you should earn will be using to write down the debt. I will keep them in this my house. Let their mother be looking for the money. You are in trouble. Eh. Then the woman ran out to the prophet. He said, you know my master. He said, what do you have? He said, I have just little, little. Uh -huh. 
When you put that little in the hands of God, he has the means and the power to multiply it. You want multiplication, you are going to take that little in your hand. The boy with the nose and the fish, in two instances, when they fed 4,000 and 5,000, counting men without the women and the children, they brought the little, they put it in the hands of the master. He gave thanks to God. The Bible says, the psalmist said, Oh ye earth, praise the Lord. When you praise the Lord, then the earth will bring forth increase. He gave thanks to God. Then he gave it to them. And the thing was multiplied. He said, I have little. He said, take that little. You know what God said? He said, my ways are not your ways. Neither are my thoughts. Then the prophet said to the woman, go, you are already owing money. Then they said, go and borrow vessels. A person is owing money. You say, go and enter into more debt. Go, go from house to house. Do you have Bazia here? Do you have Bazia here? Collect as many vessels. Then enter inside your house with your two sons. Lock the door. Take that small and pour it. The woman followed the instruction. The instructions of God don't make sense so many times. She took the small and she poured. The Bible says, as she kept on pouring, the oil was flowing. When she had no more vessel any longer, then the oil stopped. You are in problem. They say, go and borrow more money. Is there any sense in that one? <laughs> but if you do not follow the instruction, you are in trouble. You know, God gave some laws. There's one of it called the law of release. Every seventh year, you are released from debt. So, now you have a choice, sir, to wait for the next anniversary of the seven years before you come out of debt. That's your own problem. Then the 49th year and the 50th year, we have two consecutive years uh, of release. So you can wait for, say, well, I'm owing money. This is the second year. So I will wait for five years to come out of debt. But you can do like that widow and come out today. I declare and I speak concerning your life this morning. Every man, every woman we hear is present. You are owing money, you are in debt. I ask and I pray by the mercy of God that miraculously let there be debt released in the name of Jesus Christ. I say let there be debt released in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will cause the heavens to open and the sons and daughters of men will show you favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Give and it shall be given. Second Corinthians 9. I read 6 to 8. Second Corinthians 9. Second Corinthians 9, 6 to 8. But this I say, he which sweat sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which sweat bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he has proposed in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly of a necessity for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good. He that soweth uh, sparingly. What does it mean to sow sparingly? Eh? Little. <laughs> You know, when I was coming, God said I should look at that scripture again. He said the word sparring. He said what is the root word? I said spar and sparring. What does spar mean? To fight. Uh -huh. When you read that scripture, then it goes on. It says not what? Grudgingly. Do you know what it means to be grudging? It's fighting. Let them just take the thing. They're always asking for money, sir. The seed is new. He that giveth uh, as if he's fighting God and man. That's what he means parily. Uh, so you can even bring plenty, but you are bringing it as if you are quarreling and fighting. They have come again, you know, they are always asking for money. You know, what is wrong with these people? He said, God loveth a cheerful, a cheerful, uh, the one that is not coming as if he's coming to come and box my face. He that giveth sparingly. You want your life to change. The Lord taught me certain things. He said that when I, that's me now, 
When you want your situation to change, he said, increase your offering. And he used the analogy of a farmer. He said, a farmer that keeps on sowing the same amount every year will get the same results. When he wants his situation to change, he has to do certain things. One, he has to get a bigger farmland, and a bigger farmland requires greater seed. He says, so if you want your situation to change, he says, increase your seed. The principles of God, First John says, uh, the commandments of God are not grievous. Neither are they meant to harm. So when God asks you and I to do something, uh, it is for our own good. Galatians 6, 7 says, uh, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. <laughs> Malachi 3, 7, Malachi 3, 7 to 12. You want heaven to open over your life. <laughs> One of the things you have to do is in that Malachi 3. Malachi 3, I'll read from verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Ye are caused with a cause, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there might be meat in my house. And prove me now here which said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuild the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Jesus said, Whatsoever you bind here or not shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose here or not shall be lost in heaven. Paul says, Resist the devil, being steadfast in faith, then shall he flee. So, I can choose to be doing binding and losing. I can choose uh, to be resisting Satan in faith. But I can also choose an easier one. He says, bring ye all the tithes and the offerings uh, into my storehouse. Prove me here with and see if I myself will not do the binding and losing and rebuking Satan. You can check. It's your own choice. The Bible says now he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. So, there are two ways to learn obedience. They just tell you, and you go and do it. And then you can learn it through suffering. Uh, when you have suffered, nobody will tell you. If you, 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 say, you tell uh, a child, say, go and bring that my slippers. Uh, uh, uh. I was in one place about last week. One man and his wife, I didn't know first name was his wife, they had about, they had about four or six children, I can't remember, one supermarket, so I was trying to, I was behind them. So I was trying to pray for something. So, you know, just small, small children like this. The man is trying to pay. Then they walk back inside the supermarket. They go and bring something else. So I just stood, I was just being patient. Then when the cashier wants to add up the thing, another one will go and bring sweet. They will add it. So I just, I just looking like this. Then as they are trying to round up the thing, another would have run inside the supermarket to go and bring bazooka Joe. <laughs> so I just, I just want, I was just watching. So the man too was being patient, being patient. So after some time, he turned to two of them, the two oldest ones. He said, "If I see any sweet in your hand, if I, if I, if I, if I rush you and give you slap from the back, <laughs> in, in Nigeria there is no child abuse." Uh, he said, if I, if I see that sweet in your, if you break the sweet again, he said, if I give you slap from behind, he said, the two of them said, we use two hands. <laughs> uh -huh. You see, when a person has suffered, nobody needs to tell him to obey. Uh -huh. 
If you, are, you, you know what they call a abara? Do you know abara? Okay, they don't do that one again. Uh, now, now they say they put them in naughty corner. I say, ah, naughty corner. Only naughty corner. They say, uh, they say uh, Nick, go and stay in naughty corner there. Jesus. As you are going to that naughty corner, uh, a bara is slapped on the back. They are giving you a bara like this. Oh, T. Debe, you haven't got in there. Kilo, what are you waiting for? Uh, they call one, if forty or you, when they slap you like this, you you, uh, you will be turning like this. Uh, if they have given you a bara before, they, you are not going to bring that. Is that going, sir? Uh, that time when I was going up in, in the, the, they had one corridor along the that corridor had perforated bricks, and then they put a net. So in the night, when you are walking there, you can see outside. So when they say go and bring something, hey, I say, I'm going to walk through that corridor. How am I going to do it? So maybe I will call somebody to follow me. Yeah, what a limit. That's come and follow me. When they send you to me too, I will follow you. So we'll go. Yeah. Are they interested in that you're afraid of darkness? Come on, show me. Oh, you uh, lost, sir. When you are taking hot slap, yeah. oh, this one, the naughty corner. <laughs> I just be laughing. Naughty corner. Uh, uh, where my, my <laughs> when I look at my mother now, I, I can't believe he's the same person. Uh, I can't believe. It's incredible. Uh, in fact, now since my father died, when she's talking to me you now, she'll be she'll be saying, Oh mommy, oh mommy. Ah. So I'm wondering <laughs> Are you just knowing that uh, oh, mommy. Uh, say, ah, oh mommy, oh mommy. I say, ah. <laughs> Uh, he went to start school now. She was fire. Uh, I just, when, I, when I'm standing with her now, the, the height, uh, i just been looking at her. Uh, is it the same person? Uh, was she this short? <laughs> Jesu. Yeah, one day, I can't remember, I did something. She's a teacher in the school. The teacher has flogged me. Uh, so the teacher has flogged me. I think they went to go and tell her in staffs in the teacher's room or whatever they call it. She didn't say anything. So he got home. She told my father. So he said, uh-huh. That's, go outside there, go and cut the cane by yourself. So you go and cut the cane. You bring the cane, say, ah, this one is your size. He said, you better go and cut the cane. If I go and cut it myself, I will cut <laughs> You go and cut her. So after they flogged me, I thought the matter has ended. The next morning, she came to my class, told them to put table like this, to lie down the uh, lie down the thing. He said, "You want to spoil my name in this place? <laughs> before, before you spoil my name, I will spoil your name." Uh, you can learn obedience by just obey, and you can learn it by waiting for a bara. You don't know that God can give a person a bara. Uh, if God gives you a bara, you'll be running for the next three years. You'll be running. You'll be, you say, where are you running to? Uh, the Bible says the heaven of heaven cannot. Where are you going to run to? Uh, if you know what is good for you, just follow. He says, whatsoever is said to you, do. Whatever it tells you to do is what you should do. When you follow instruction, when you follow the divine recipe for that thing that you are looking for, you will get it. There's a story of a woman in the Bible. You know, we come to church. I'm not saying that, uh, don't, I'm just, we, no, maybe we'll come to church now. You see, some people will be dancing like this. <coughs> Uh, this is track and dance. Uh, all of them, you see this one too. Oh, dance, 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 dance. So that day they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant. The Bible says David would take six paces. He would stop. He would sacrifice. He would take six steps. Would, I don't know how long that thing must have taken. Then he danced and danced and danced. Shoe fell off. 
shirt. It's a king. Then they came to Jerusalem. His wife, Mika, saw him. So when he got to him, he said, ah, you don't know that you are the president of Nigeria. Have you seen all those big men, including big pastors? They will just stand like this. You see the way me I'm dancing? I'm, I'm nobody. So why would I not dance? Yes, no. So, uh, one person was telling one story. Somebody who is supposedly a bishop went somewhere and he was really praising God. So the other bishops were just standing. So after the meeting, they told him, sir, you don't know you're a bishop. You can't be dancing, but you, you dance like that. Hmm. So David got home. And uh, his wife called him. He said, you disgrace our family today. See the way that you were dancing in front of all your subjects and your citizens. And you. Ah, David said, it's God I was praising. No? You must, and so what? If it's God, then come. Then the Bible says concerning Milka or Micah, she was childless. So I said, ah, is it possible for a person to despise people who are praising God and run into trouble? In Genesis 20, Abimelech took the wife of a prophet. But, uh, Ab- yeah, Abimelech took the wife of a prophet, Abraham. And the Bible says, the entire town or the entire country or nation, God shot all their wombs because they took the wife of a prophet. You see the way people can run into trouble? When they are dancing, you don't know how to dance. Just keep your mouth shut. What's always wrong with that? Look at that. If you see that sister, the way we just come on like this, uh, as if... You know they can slap your mouth. Uh, a lot of people have run into problems because of the things they have said. All kinds of problems. One person said, there's, there's nothing I can say. There's nobody I can't talk to. I say, eh, okay, carry on. Hmm. <laughs> when Moses married a black woman, he was the younger of the three siblings, Moses, Aaron, Miriam. And uh, Miriam was not just there, she was, at least, she was old enough to know something when Moses was born. Uh, carry and put inside water. So he married a black woman. Then Miriam and Aaron held a meeting. What is wrong with this boy self? You know that you, if you have somebody who is older than you, you always be a boy. Even when you are eight, you are still a boy. So what is wrong with this boy, sir? He didn't see anybody to marry. It's a black woman he went to go and marry. And God listened in the conversation. Then God came down. He called the three of them. Moses, Aaron, and uh, Miriam. He said, um, the three of them were prophets. All the three of them, they are prophets. So he said, and when I speak to prophets, I speak to them in dreams and visions, and at times those dreams and visions are, are not even too clear. He said, this Moses is not like that. Oh. When I speak to him, I speak to him. Uh-huh. Ah, he said, you people were not afraid to talk against him. Then they are, they, are, they are already begging now. They are begging God, they are begging Moses, please help us to beg your God, help us to beg your God. So it is begging his God. He said, don't put mouth inside this matter, I'll just stay like that. He said, if Miriam's father spat in her face, what will happen? He said, okay, maybe Miriam was the ringleader. Uh, so he said, well, okay, for the next seven days, she will be leprous. They should keep her outside. So the whole nation waited for her. Seven days, she's covered in leprosy. Then after seven days, she came. I'm sure that after that incident, she must have been humble. Hmm. Because even if you are cured of leprosy, 
Do you know that people will still be looking at? You think they will just go and sit by that person? That's assuming now that maybe we just went to do a crusade and there were lepers there and they were cured and made whole and all of that. And then the next Sunday they followed us to church. Then the ushers are telling people, see? They'll be like, no be that, man, be that. They say, I leave that one, God don't heal. I say, ah, oh boy, seat plenty for this or this. Look, oh boy. She is healed and all of that. But there would still have been people who would be still be using that kind of eye. Say, if he give you something, chop, not take off. <laughs> when you do not follow what God has said, uh, all kinds of things uh, can happen. Mm. Neman was leprous. And the instruction for the prophet was jump in the Jordan River seven times and you come out. Initially, he was reluctant. He said, what do they mean by that? They are cleaner rivers uh, where I come from. They said, well, ah. Then the people that followed him, they said, ah, what is difficult in that one? If you jump inside the water seven times and nothing happened, you have still not lost anything. He went inside the river seven times uh, and after the seventh time, eh, he came out uh, and he was cured. If he had jumped inside it five times or six times, nothing would have happened. The Lord said to the children of Israel, he says when they came to Jericho and nobody could enter in and out, he said this is what you are going to do. The first day, you go around the city once. Nobody should talk. You think that that thing was easy? We are talking about millions of people. If we are doing service, we have a service, okay, like last Sunday, those children were here. They had to be going back to Guan, tell them not to make noise. So in those millions of, there were children there, and God said nobody must shout. Maybe some people will hold their children more like this. Don't spoil our miracle. Go around it once. Nobody must say anything. And do so six times. Six days once every time. Then on the seventh day, seven times. Let them even just tell us, let's even assume that Jericho is just as big as this Ikoi and Victoria Island. Let's just even assume. It's just as big as Ikoi and Victoria Island. It's a town. Let's even just, just. God just speak to us. Everybody in this local assembly now, we are going to walk around Victoria Land and Nikoyi once. As we get to that uh, Magfasa, <laughs> some people will run away. Uh -huh. Then on the seventh day, seven times, I did die up. Hmm. You can't walk from here to Fallon Mall. You'll be drinking uh, ever water. <laughs> I better me buy cold water. I better me buy cold water. Uh, then on the seventh day, seven times. You think it was easy? Uh -huh. And the first six, in fact, all, all to the end of that seventh day. It says, then at the end of the seventh day, it says they should give a shout. Even as we are inside church now, in the presence of God, some people are still talking to one another. Not so. Talk, uh, they, are, they are still. When we leave church, I think we will go to Chicken Republic. You say, ah, now that one, now you they think of now. Your mind not there inside this message. In God, you have a long and And then we are walking around the Koyo and Victoria Island. Nobody should, <laughs> nobody should shout. Eh. If, come, eh. this, all of us who are walking is by my side now. They want to talk. And I know that it's talking will spoil my miracle. <laughs> yes. They say nobody should shout. 
you are going on the, as we are going like that, or cat that just come, yeah, you want to, eh, you want, <laughs> you just remember that they said nobody should shout. The cat that nearly hit you. If not that they said, you will even forget church mind, you will forget everything. Uh-huh. It takes discipline to work with God. If you do not discipline yourself, Paul said, I put my body under, I push it down. It's not easy. Uh, I suppress it. You are here this morning. What have you been told to do that you have not done? Then God told them, He said, Everything in that city is our cost. Everything. Don't take anything from there. Ah. Uh-uh. Uh, let's even shop right. Assuming there is shop right. Have you gone there before? You see all those fine, fine cloth that you have been eyeing and your money cannot reach it. And today, now, we have conquered shop right. And God said, don't take anything from there. And you just get to the shop. That shoe that you have... So a man called Achan, he took some things and he brought problem to everybody. When they went to go and fight in I, a small town like this, they were defeated. I, they said, what happened? God said, somebody has taken their costume. When a person uh, deviates from instruction, he runs into trouble. When Jacob uh, was leaving the house of his father-in-law, Rachel carried an idol and put it in her then the owner of the juju went to where he kept his juju. He didn't see it. Ah, he said, These people that said that they are worshiping Jehovah, I said, they, are, they, they, are carried, they have carried my juju. So he pursued them. He got there. He said, Where's my juju? Ah, Jacob said, What do you mean by that? He said, Somebody carried my. He said, No. Then what did Jacob do? He said, uh, Search all of us. And uh, whosoever took it, let that person die. Mm. And he did not know that it's his beloved mm. that took it. So the woman hid the thing under her. When her father came to where she was on the camel or whatever, he said, ah, he says, I, he said please, I can't stand up because uh, this is my monthly time. So he said, okay, okay, okay. So the idol is there. But the husband had made the pronouncement. Whosoever took that thing, let that person die. And the Bible says later on in the course of pregnancy, she died. Because she took the accursed thing. It's not everything that they give somebody that you should take. It's not what? Hmm. You got married. They gave you wedding gifts. You didn't bother to pray about it or pray over it, whatever. You just got to your house, you and your newly minted bride. They just begin to they open the thing. Oh, there are people who have opened such gifts and they went blind instantly. Mm. Yeah. Instantly. The one that they gave me, at least I don't marry now, I don't stay small. Are we? Are we? We have been roommates now for a while. Where are the things, sir? <laughs> I never opened one single one. And I never took one single one. Not one. I'm not saying that that's what you should do. Me, I just followed. They packed the thing. I think they took it to her parents' place. They troubled us, troubled us. Come and carry your load. Come and carry your load. I not go there. She not. I don't know what happened to the thing. Up to children. 
I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I just followed my mind. We went to somewhere yesterday, a funeral in Ife. So they are doing the funeral. The, it's an elderly man who lost his wife. He's, he's telling his children, they are all grown up. Oh, don't let anybody touch your head. Mm. They are not small, small children, no. The first one is like maybe 57 or 58 or 59. Yeah, maybe the youngest one, maybe like 45 or more than that. I said, don't let anybody touch your head. Yeah. You just you go outside. They say, ah, I like this, your couple. I like this, your couple. They can use bad hand to touch your head. Years ago, God told me in the 90s, he said, don't let anybody put hand on your head, just anyhow. Mm. Yeah. Bring your head, let me anoint your head. Bring your head, let me anoint your head. They have anointed your head, they have anointed, they have anointed into your head. Mm. Everywhere you go to, you have bring them, uh, they are, they are, uh, when they say, let us uh, you carry your head. Uh, bring your head. Bring your head. Mm. Even God said, lay hands on nobody. Uh, I don't usually lay hands on people or sex, I'm told. Yes. You are here this morning. Have you followed... Uh, the divine recipe for what you are looking for. James says, is any afflicted amongst you? Let him pray and call for the elders of the church to anoint him or her with oil. And then the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. That's part of the recipe for divine healing. Is any amongst you afflicted or oppressed? Let him pray. Then call for the elders of the church who should pray for him or her, anointing him. It says the prayers, the fervent, effectual prayers of a righteous man make it much power available. Elijah, being a man of like passions, prayed that he should not rain and did not rain. Then he prayed again that he should rain and There's a scripture in John. See. And uh, I consider it as uh, one of the greatest statements in the Bible. John 11. Verse 41 and 42. John 11, 41 and 42. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. I thank you, for I know that you have already heard me. And I know that you hear me always. It's an incredible statement. I know that you hear me always. So years ago, I began to challenge God. You said you are not a respecter of persons. You said we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. If you spared it, Spared him not. How shall you not also with him give us all things? Peter says, All things that pertain to life and God. So I prayed that. I kept on challenging God with scripture. He says, Put me to remembrance. Bring my word to me. Plead your case. Then you'll be justified. So I prayed for months. And then one night, I'm praying in tongues. And God said to me, He said, It's possible for a person to enter into such a realm. He said, But I'll have to teach that person many things. It's possible for a person to get to a place where God will hear him all the time. But I have to teach him many things. 
Can you imagine? God just hear you all the time. I'll just, Victoria, let me carry this table and chair. I'll just put it at uh, under bridge at Falomo and put banner. God hears me always church. You think that people will not come just to even find out. God hears me always. Yeah. This one comes to meet you. Please, I pray for me. You pray. God had. Regardless of what the person has done, no? he says, you hear me. The Bible says, he lived forevermore to make intercession for us. You hear me always. This one came. Regardless of what the issue is, God hears him. This one came. Regardless of the issue, God hears him. You hear me always. God said, I have to teach that person many things. How many things that God needs to teach you to get your miracle? Bow your heads this morning. That thing that you are looking for, you have to enter into God's cooking class and ask for the recipe. What would you have me do, Lord? What do I need to do? To receive that thing. There is a prayer called the prayer of inquiry. It's not just that you are asking for a thing. You are asking that what do I need to do? I don't know what it is that you are asking God for. There is a recipe to receiving that thing. What you need is instruction. He says, I will pray the Father to send you another comforter. And when he comes, he shall teach you all things. I tell people, you need to enter into the school of the Holy Spirit. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Ask God this morning. 